Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 10.1, Sequences as Functions. Starting with some vocab words, we have sequence. A sequence is a set of numbers in a particular order. So 2, 4, 6, 8, that would be a sequence. Next, we have a term. A term is each number in that sequence. So a 4 was in the previous sequence, so a 4 would be a term. Then we have a couple different types of sequences. First one is a finite sequence, and all that is is sequence sequence that ends. So 2, 4, 6, it ends with 6, so it's a finite sequence. And then an, in, an infinite sequence is a sequence that continues forever. So 2, 4, 6, 8, on and on and on and on and on, and does not stop. Now we have a way to write these finite and infinite sequences. Now this 1, 2, 3, and all the way to n is the position of the number. And then we have terms of the sequence is written as a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3. These terms of sequences could be your 2, 4, and 6. But 2 is the first term in the sequence. 4 is the second term in the sequence. And the third term in the sequence is 6. So these are the terms of the sequence. This is the position of those terms. And oh, this goes on and on forever because sometimes in math we don't know what that final number is going to be. So we just represent it by a sub n. Now what are some different types of sequences? We have an arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is each term after the first is found by adding, right, keyword there, adding a constant, the common difference, which comes up later, to the previous term. So we're adding a constant to the previous term. The common difference is just a constant value, so this value, this common difference, does not change. It's added to each term. So let's take a look at some of our problems that we'll see. We are asked, determine if the sequence is arithmetic. If it is, state the common difference. So an arithmetic sequence is when we are adding to that next term. So we add going this way. Now let's say that I don't know what we're adding. You probably do know already, but if you do not know, right? If you do not know, if you want to go backwards, forwards we add, backwards we subtract. So how do we do that? I take this negative 2, the term in front, negative 2, minus a negative 8, just subtracting this guy, we get a positive 6. So, so far we're adding 6 to each term. So go to the term ahead. So now I go to 4. I subtract a negative 2. And that again gives me a positive 6. So far so good. And then I go to 10 minus 4. That gives me a positive 6. So our common difference is 6. Our common difference is 6. And yes, it is an arithmetic sequence. Now again, ladies and gentlemen, you can always find terms through subtracting. Take the one in front, subtract the one in behind because sometimes they won't be this easy to find. Same thing over here. Say I don't know what we add or subtract to each term. So I'm going to take 8 and work backwards. I'm going to subtract. So it's going to be negative 8 minus a negative 3. That gives me a negative 5. Then I take 13, working backwards, negative 13 minus a negative 8 gives me a negative 5. One more time, negative 23 minus a negative 13, that gives me a negative 10. So do we have a common difference? We do not have a common difference, therefore we do not have an arithmetic, so this sequence sequence is not an arithmetic sequence because we have negative 5, negative 5, negative 10. Now, we are adding, yes, we are still adding a term here. We are adding a negative 5. So that's how we are moving forward. Yes, we are still adding a negative 5. Or if you want to look at it, you could add or subtract to the next term. But still, this guy is not an arithmetic sequence. Now we are asked to find the next three terms of the sequence. So you look at this and you realize, okay, I'm just adding two to each term. So let's just go ahead and add two to each term. So I have negative four, I add two to negative four to get a negative two. Then I add two to that to get zero. And then I add two to that 
to get 2. So the next three terms of this sequence are negative 2, 0, and 2. Now the other sequence in this section is a geometric sequence. And that is each term is determined by multiplying, ladies and gentlemen, is determined by multiplying a non-zero constant by the previous term. That constant is known as the common ratio. The, the common ratio is known as the ratio of successive terms of a geometric sequence. So it's just the same number that you're multiplying to find each term. So geometric sequence, you multiply. You multiply an arithmetic sequence, you add up to your next term. Now we are asked, determine whether each sequence is geometric. What's geometric means? It means that we are multiplying. If it is, identify the common ratio. So now, if arithmetic, when we went backwards, we subtracted, we did the opposite of adding. So what do you think we're going to do if we go backwards in a geometric? We are actually going to divide. So now I'm trying to find my common ratio because I don't know what I can take eight times, what I can take times eight to get twenty, or take times twenty to get fifty. So I'm going to divide, working backwards. So it's going to be twenty divided by eight. That's going to give me a one or a two point five, and then I'm going to take fifty and divide by twenty. So fifty divided by twenty is 2.5. So so far so good. And then I'm going to take 125 divide that by 50. And that's going to give me 2.5. So my common ratio is 2.5. And that means we do have a geometric sequence, right? So we are multiplying each term going forward times 2.5 times 2.5 times 2.5. Next problem. And now we are going from negative to positive. Is that all right? Well, let's check it out. Here we go. 2 divided by negative 8. That gives me a negative 1 fourth. All right, now let's try the next one. Negative 0 0.5 divided by 2. What's that give me? That still gives me a negative 1 fourth. Okay. And finally, last but not least, we have a 0.125 divided by now a negative point. Five, that also gives me a negative one-fourth. So our common ratio is negative one-fourth. And yes, it is a geometric sequence. Make sure you check them all, ladies and gentlemen. And our ratios can be fractions. It is all right if they're a negative fraction. Notice what happens when they are negative fractions. It goes from negative to positive to negative to positive. So there's a hint. If it goes from negative to positive, negative to positive, on and on and on, your ratio is going to be negative. Now with six, we are asked to find the next three terms in the geometric sequence. Well, how do we find that common ratio? We want to divide the term ahead of the previous term. So I'm going to go 15 divided by 10. That's going to give me 1.5. So I'm going to take this 1.5 and take it times 22.5. So I have 22.5, I take that times 1.5 to get 33.75. Now I'm going to take this term, 33.75 times 1.5 to get 50.625. So there's the second term that I'm trying to find. Now I'm going to take this guy, and what do you think I'm going to take it times? I'm going to take it times 1.5, so it's times 1.5, and that gives me 75.9375. And so we found the, those next three terms of the geometric sequence. And that does it for section 10.1, Sequences as Functions. Good day.